I and just carry on where I left off. So, so far we've covered how inhibitory and excitatory post-synaptic um, potentials lead to electrotonic gradients, how an electrotonic gradient leads to the eventual depolarization and carrying of an action potential, and an action potential is carried via saltatory conduction. Um, I used to think that saltatory conduction, it was called saltatory because sodium was involved and sodium's like a salt. Um, actually, this isn't the case. Um, saltatory comes from a Latin word that means to hop or to leap. So it's got nothing to do with salt. It's just to hop or to leap. So saltatory conduction just means jumping or leaping or hopping conduction. So when a part of the cell um, depolarizes, namely at the hillock when action potential begins, it doesn't go in a wave down the axon, it actually jumps. And the reason it jumps is because of the Schwann cells, or Schwann cells, however you want to pronounce it, which are insulating the cell. Consequently, the only areas of the cell that actually have membranes that are in contact with the extracellular um, fluid um, are these areas, which are known as nodes of Ranvier. And what happens is when the hillock depolarizes, it depolarizes to such an extent um, that it is able to make the next node of Ranvier reach threshold. And, and so that node of Ranvier will depolarize to such an extent that, it re that the next node of Ranvier reaches threshold, that will depolarize, and so on and so forth. The advantage of this kind of conduction, saltatory conduction, is that the nerve impulse is carried much faster um, than it would otherwise be. The other advantage is because only small areas of the membrane are exposed, um, the return to rest in membrane pot um, potential is slightly quicker. You can imagine if there were no Swan cells and the whole thing was depolarized the whole way along, that would be a lot, a lot more ions to transport to bring it back to rest in membrane potential. So they're the two advantages of saltatory conduction. So once saltatory conduction has happened, we're here. We're now at the synapse. We're talking about a motor neuron. So the synapse, all these boutons, are known as motor end plates. And that's now what I'm going to kind of zoom in on and talk about. So if this is our axon coming down here, um, and I'll put a couple of Schwann cells in. And we'll just say, here's the sign, here's the, um, boot on, the synaptic boot on, or the motor end plate, whatever you want to call it. Now, there's special channels in this area of the cell, and they're voltage-gated calcium channels. Now, what happens is, when the area of depolarization goes right through the cell via saltatory conduction and ends up here, these voltage-gated calcium channels are sensitive to the voltage that's being carried, and so they open. And they open, and calcium floods into the cell. Um, the flood of calcium causes the exocytosis of the vesicles in this part of the cell. So they come, exocytose their contents into what's known as a synaptic cleft. So if I just finish off, we would have a muscle here. So this is muscle, this is the end of the axon, the motor end plate, this is a synaptic cleft. The action potential comes down, causes voltage-gated calcium channels to open, calcium floods in. This stimulates and causes um, exocytosis of vesicles, and so the neurotransmitter is released. In this case, we're talking about a motor neuron and a muscle, so it's actually acetylcholine that's released. Acetylcholine diffuses down its concentration gradient, where it binds to receptors on the sarcolemma. Sarcolemma is just a name for the membrane of the muscle cell, it's called a sarcolemma. This binds, and the binding causes a conformational change, which causes sodium channels to open in the sarcolemma, in the muscle cell membrane, and this causes the influx of sodium. Remember, sodium is the made extracellular um, ion. So sodium floods in, and just as with the nerve cell, the f influx of sodium into the muscle causes depolarization of the sarcolemma. So the sarcolemma actually depolarizes much like the um, muscle cell does. And this um, depolarizing potential is carried along the muscle, the surface of the muscle and the, mem and the membrane. Now within the muscle, 
they're these things called T tubules, which you've probably heard about, and you're now going to find out what their function is. So these T tubules are big bits going down, and they're all through. They go deep into the muscle. So not only is this depolarizing potential carried along the surface of the sarcolemma, it can go deep into the muscle via these T tubules. And what happens when this um, potential goes down into the T tubules is that it stimulates a type of receptor called a DHP receptor, also known as, well, DHP, which I think stands for dihydropyridine receptor. So the dihydropyridine receptor changes conformation. It's kind of linked to another receptor called a rhinodyne receptor. So, and the rhinodyne receptor is attached to sarcoplasmic reticulum. The sarcoplasmic reticulum is the endoplasmic reticulum of the muscle cell and at the end of it there's this kind of sac and that contains calcium. Loads of calcium ions are inside, loads of them. So what happens? The depolarization of the sarcoma travels along, goes down the T tubules, causes a um, change in conformation of the DHP receptors which in turn causes the change in the rhinodyne receptors and the change in the rhinodyne receptor, sorry, would be the white one here, causes channels to open, which causes calcium to flood into the cell. And this is when we actually begin to get muscle contraction, because when this calcium floods into the cell, it binds to something called um, uh, tropomyosin. That causes a conformational change, and that eventually leads to contraction. I'm going to go into more detail about that in my next video. But focusing on this... There are active transporters in the sarcoplasmic reticulum that are constantly pumping calcium back in. So eventually all the calcium is pumped back in, there's not much calcium intracellularly in the, muscle, in the skeletal muscle cell, and so the cell will be able to relax. I'm now going to go into more detail about actually what this, where this calcium goes. In my next video I'm going to go into more detail about where this calcium goes and what it actually binds to, to cause the muscle to shorten in length. But um, I hope that all made sense.